Hello and welcome to a new series I've wanted to do called Games I Think You Should Play. And if it's not apparent, I will be showing you games I think you should play. I hope twice is enough because today I'm going to be talking about Sunless Sea, a game developed by Fail Better Games and released in 2015. Okay, that is longer ago than I thought. Either way, this is a game that I absolutely love. It does an excellent job of setting the tone and telling a compelling narrative. But Webb, I don't even know what this game is. Well, shut up and I'll tell you, audience member. To quote the Steam page for the game, Sunless Sea is a gothic horror RPG with a focus on exploration, exquisite storytelling, and frequent death. Whether that tickles your fancy or not does not matter. At least not to me while I'm trying to structure a narrative for this video. What is important is why I think you should play it. Because it's my video. Well, let's just start with the meat and bones of the game. The gameplay. You know the part where you play the game? Come on, keep up, it's in the title! Gameplay! Gosh! In Sunless Sea, you'll be assuming the role of a ship captain sailing the Untersee. Yes, I said that correctly, the Untersee. What is that? Well, it's the Undersea. Why isn't it called that? The game is jam-packed with lore like this that we'll talk about in a bit. But let's jump back to the gameplay. You know, the thing I said I was going to describe but immediately didn't? Okay, so the game has two major scenes to it that I'll call Exploration and Journal. Now first I'll talk about Journal. I call it this because it literally takes place in a journal. The journal is where almost all dialogue is given to you, where all your choices and transactions will be made. This is where the game unfolds before you and all context is given. The second half of your gameplay is exploration. Now I call it that because in this scene, you will actually be captaining your ship and sailing it around to other ports. Otherwise called exploration. I'm just big brainin' on these ones. Now I said this would be the other half of your gameplay, but in reality, this is most of it. So with the basic understanding through with, let's do a quick run through of what actually happens in the game. Well, when you first start up the game, you'll have to create a captain. You'll choose a skill to improve and an ambition. The ambition lets you decide what your end game is. You'll start in a place called Fallen London, which is typically your base of operations. It has the supplies you'll need for your adventure as well as some tasks to give to help guide you and your ship. And after that, you'll set off east to some capacity, since you'll be on the westernmost side of the map. You can go north and south, but east is kind of required then. If you don't go east, you're dumb. But where are you sailing to? Well, you'll be sailing to other ports, which each have quests and characters of their own. Along the way from port to port, you'll have to manage slash keep an eye on a few things. The first being your fuel. For obvious reasons, you don't want to run out of fuel. Lest you be stranded on the cruel sea. The next being supplies slash food. You should probably also be able to tell why you might need food. If you run out, you'll be faced with cruel but desperate options. And lastly, your terror or sanity. Don't let it get too high because insane crew members tend to be less than cooperative. A navy full of insane people probably isn't the best navy. Along the way, you'll find many different horrors and great ships that you can engage in combat with. This leads to two more stats. Your hull and crew. Your hull is your life points and your crew is your fucking crew. The biggest part of combat in the game is asking if it's worth it. Because even if you know you can take that Lorne Fluke, do you really want to lose most of your crew fighting it and then have your ship no work good because you don't have enough crew members? And do you want to pay the repairs incurred from the fight? Maybe. That's up to you. Now, that's typically what most of the gameplay will be. Except for one aspect of it. This game is a roguelike, meaning that death is permanent. Once you die, you'll have to start over. But don't worry, not completely. It's technically a roguelite. You can put inheritance items and such in place so that if such a thing were to occur, your next captain won't start at such a disadvantage. Now, the quote I used for the game described frequent death. That's one part I sort of disagree with. The game is not unfair by any means. You won't die and feel completely robbed. Maybe a little bamboozled. But the biggest power you have against it as a player is knowledge. Yeah, I'm bringing y'all back, kinda. That was terrible, but bringing y'all back. You'll learn a lot from your mistakes, what monsters you can or can't take, and how far your ship can go before running out of fuel and supplies, and where you can pick up more of that. And dying doesn't always feel like a complete defeat, but rather a chance to do things over again, but make better choices this time. Alright, I think that's all I wanted to say about the gameplay for now, so let's talk about the story and lore. You know, the brain and spine of the story. The game has just fantastic writing, like award-winning level. 
So much so that it did in fact win an award. Four of them for the writing alone. And one of them from Slant Magazine for just being a cool game overall. The game can seem a bit wordy at first, but unlike a lot of other games, instead of reading a bit and then getting bored, you read a bit and then get addicted to it. And that's just the beauty of the game's story. It's addictive. That's because it makes you work for your answers and provides a good bit of time between being able to actually finish a quest with characters you encounter. It feeds you the information piece by piece. When you meet someone in the game, they have a lot to offer, and you have a lot of choices in how your relationship develops. But the biggest thing it gets right is the words that aren't spoken. When you're on your ship trying to get an item that the character needs for the questline, you have a lot of time to think about what they said and what you'll be able to do. They build an air of mystique around each questline that makes you just want to figure out what's going on and what will happen if you decide to actually do it. Moving over to lore now, the game is packed tighter with lore than you are packed in your skinny jeans. Yeah, I'm talking to you. Take them off. The world is Lovecraftian and downright weird at times. It refuses to explain a lot of it to you as a player. Instead, it chooses to immerse you into its world and force you to eventually just accept the strangeness as you adventure and eventually learn why things are the way that they are. You encounter giant monstrosities, strange gods of the Z, and you can put a man's dream snakes in a box! What are the rules of this world? Who knows? You, if you play the game. Finally, I want to talk about what the game does best. Ambiance. Everything in the game sets its tone perfectly. The music that I've put over the video, the sizable dark open sea, and every terrifying horror tale told to you will put you in a perfect mood while you explore the darkest reaches of the sunless sea. That's a good ending line, right? Too bad it's not, because I just want to recap to clearly state why I think you should play Sunless Sea. It offers a beautifully chilling world that edges you on to keep exploring and uncover its deepest secrets, with the best tonal quality I've seen from any game if you let yourself indulge in it. And lastly, it's just fun. I love overcoming the long-standing challenges it imposes and generally just improving in the game. Now, that is where I'd end it, but there's one more thing I wanted to do. If you play games on PC like I do, you probably use Steam to some extent. The top review for Sunless Sea is a negative one, at least in the US. While the majority are positive, the top review doesn't echo that. And with that likely being the first review many people will read, I wanted to talk about some of the points the reviewer made and argue against them. Here is the review. If you want to pause and read it, go ahead, but I'm just going to focus on a few points of his. Starting with, It's not worthy. The very slow gameplay, the punishment for failure is near total restart. The part about very slow gameplay is sorta of true. The slow nature of the game can feel tedious if you don't have any particular goal within the game at the moment. However, I do think it's worth it a lot of the time. The stories and actual in-game rewards are a pretty fair incentive that make it worth the journey. Now the punishment part is just wrong. Because they don't mean punishment for failure, they mean punishment for death. And as you play the game, the deaths become farther and farther apart as you know what is and isn't a good idea. Also, depending on how many preparations you put in place, death isn't the worst. I described it previously as a chance to do things better. Next we have, You often need to perform actions without context, with unknown positive or game-endingly negative consequences. This feels very misleading to me. You don't need to know what is the outcome of every action you take before doing so to be able to make decent decisions. The game doesn't just thrust, if you click the wrong dialogue option, you die at you. And to say that you need to perform actions without context is insanely false. When you click a dialogue option, it doesn't always explicitly say gain X amount of money, lose X item, or whatever. Although it does explicitly do that a lot of the time, many of your actions in-game are given a lot of context on what dialogue was said to you in the moment or previously in the quest chain. Do you need to read every piece of dialogue to make decision that doesn't kill you then? No, not at all. You can skim a fair portion of it or ignore most of it, and many terrible decisions in the game will tell you exactly what stat will be negatively affected or straight up, this is probably a terrible idea. And even then, some of them offer an out after taking it. And overall, as you play the game, you get a feel for what is probably right and wrong. And if it's truly a gray, I don't know what to pick. If you're negatively affected, it's not going to be that bad, and it's not going to appear that often. And finally we have... Once you have finally upgraded your ship, the game becomes easy to the point of meaningless. I disagree with this statement the most out of all of them, even more than the previous one. There are a few kinds of ships you could upgrade to that will fit your playstyle, the most expensive ones just being warships. And the difficulty of the game comes from the decisions you make and literally the routes you take. 
So being able to upgrade your ship for a very large sum to make parts of the game easier is how all RPG mechanics are supposed to work. In this quote, it feels to me that he's literally complaining that he's able to fight some of the more common monsters in the game without almost dying each time. Also, keep in mind, it's not easy to get a new ship in the game. Money isn't just handed out like crazy. You have to earn it, and it can take a while. Buying a new ship is not an impulse decision. Now I know I said finally, but I want to sum it up with this quote. Without a wiki, you will fail. So, he probably used the wiki excessively in a decision and exploration based game, then got bored with all the right decisions he was making. Sorry that last part was a bit more of a rant, but either way, thanks for watching, and I'll see y'all next time.